Welcome to the Lover's Lounge podcast, where we talk to experts and other guests on topics related to love, relationships, and sex. I am your host, Tina Love, and singles, I want to ask you a question. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to tell what kind of a person someone is by like looking at their facial features or the positioning of their ears and how big they are and maybe even the proximity of space between their eyebrows and their eyes? And what about being able to understand an individual based on their body language? Well, on this episode, we will talk to a brilliant lady that will tell us just how to do it. We are talking to Susan Ibitz. Susan has been described as quirky, weird, intense, and odd. She is a human behavior hacker. Some people hack computers, but Susan, she hacks humans. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Very, very excited to have you on. Of course, I've heard so much about you and the work that you do. And I'm sure you've heard, of course, it is amazing. So thank you very much. Yes, I cannot wait to begin discussing it. Um, I'm sure people have told you all the time, like, it's really amazing how you're able to look at facial features of people and really nail it. I've heard you do that with different podcasters, and you've done an awesome job. So I thought I would have you on the show to kind of discuss and help people who are perhaps single or maybe even in a marriage or a relationship, you know, how to better communicate with a person based on what we learn about their facial features, their body language. We're going to help you hack, hack people and, and show us, you know, how to do that. So is that okay? Yeah, perfect. I always say when you're looking for a partner, you look for somebody who is your twin. You don't have space to grow. So there are features and things and personalities that are important to be matching and another ones need to be complementary but you always need to leave room for improvement it's like if you're an introvert and it's always a misconception between introversion and extroversion for example i'm an introvert but when i'm talking about what i know i can pass as an extrovert because i know my craft i've been doing it for 20 years so I don't have any problem to speak in front of a crowd, one person or an auditorium full of people. But after that, I need to recruit myself because the way that I recharge energy yeah. is being my myself and maybe take those 15 minutes break. Yeah. An extrovert is a person that after having a hard day, they need to come and talk and talk and talk. And after, um, after a horrible day, maybe at work or personally going to go to a bar with friends and having a beer and talking about the situation. So if you're an extremely introvert and you are partnered with an extrovert, you're going to need to set middle ground. Yeah. I know couples who after a day or certain events or socializing, they agree on, I'm not going to go with you. And the other person says, well, uh, it's better. So I don't need to be paying more attention to you than my, my, my surrounded. And I know couples who like, are you getting divorced? You guys having a bad relationship? Like, no, we have an amazing relationship. Why? Because we set the ground, the things that we don't like. I know guys who like baseball and women who doesn't understand them. Me is one of them. To me, it's so boring. They playing in pajamas. <laughs> so if I'm with someone who like baseball, I would say, honey, I can go one time to go with you to enjoy the hot dogs and the beer. But I will not going to be going with you all the time. Right. Go and take that time to go with your friends. So yeah. I think the basic of communication is not understanding that the person in front of you is not trying to drive you crazy. Right. Love, friendship, at work is the way that we process information. We are not responsible how our brain is wired. We are responsible or communicate to others and give others the chance to communicate emotionally safe the things that you need and the things that you want. For example, if I always say, if you have a person with big ears, it's going to keep listening to you. It's not going to interrupt. Why? Because they want the consistency of the words. They want to be paying attention. But if you have a person with a small ears, want to see and they want to express in a way 
that is more visual. If you have a person with big mouth, full lips, it's a person who's going to be more extroverted from the way they express with others. Instead, a person with a small mouth or no lips is not going to be talking about either feelings or what happened at the end of the day. Nice. Some people, for example, with high eyebrows, what is the distance between the eyelid and the eyebrows? They do, they have a higher proxemic like you have. You don't let people in your life until you don't feel safe emotionally and physically. You can be really nice in a networking and be the center of the attention, but personally, the people need you. You don't let people come and say, oh, you're an expert because I'm safe, so you need to prove me that you're right and you don't try to trick me. Instead, you're the kind of person who wants to do it right. Mm-hmm. Instead, people who have low distance between the eyelid and the eyebrow are do it right now. They go, they tend to interrupt. Why? Because they process information faster than a person who has hyperxemic. So they're going to tend to interrupt and you're going to think they're not paying attention to, sh- to you. Actually, they're paying so much attention, they're processing what you're saying too fast. Mm-hmm. So one example that I don't do couple consulting, but I do, I do couple compatibility, how compatible they are. Mm-hmm. So the biggest example that I have is the size of the ears, the shape of the eyebrows, the proxemic, and the mouth. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I, I, am, uh, I add the chin. So you have three kind of eyebrows, and I always use geometrical shapes because I'm visual, so it's easy for me, in, in, plus when you do it on podcast or radio, to help people to understand and process. So they can use maybe a pen and a paper and draw these. So when an eyebrow has the shape of a triangle shape, mm-hmm. we have we call them pointy eyebrows. Okay. When the eyebrow is aligned, we call it straight eyebrow. Okay. When an eyebrow is round like a circle, we call it round. Okay. So people who have round eyebrows is people oriented. They want to hear the story. They want to hear what happened. They want to hear about your friends, what happened with them. And in the other hand, you're going to have the need to talk about. So if you have a person with, for example, a, an eyebrow who is a, 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 is a strain line, what happened with that person went facts and data. So imagine that you have a woman, for example, with round eyebrows and a man with a straight eyebrows. Okay. She want to talk about what happened during the day and, I, I don't know, in the office, on the bus, on the right. train. And he's like, okay, you make it on time to work. You have a good day to work. You made it safe home. I don't care what happened rest. Right. No, because he's not caring about what you have to say. Your need to express is not the need for the other person to receive information because eyebrows are related in how we process information. Mm. Now, a person who has a triangular uh, eyebrow wants to be right based on knowledge. Is the kind of person who research things so much until you realize that you find out the same research or the same result five times in Google and like, yep, I think I should stop researching. <laughs> and you are you are cannot be intimidated. Why? Because usually when you talk, you talk because you have done your homework. Mm-hmm. So if somebody wanna sell you something before they come to you, you did all the research that you gonna find on the market to make sure that when you make a decision is data knowledge. So we have knowledge, we fact we have facts and data and we have people oriented. Imagine if you have people who have different eyebrows. Mm-hmm. But what about if I can learn about that? So instead to fight with you, I can learn how you process information, how you intake information, and how you're going to express it. Right. So if you have thin lips, like almost not thin, the lower lip is related to our external world, is related to the left part of the brain. The upper lip is related to emotion, our heart, our right brain. 
So if you have a small, a smaller upper lip or always not visible upper lip, that person is not going to be talking about emotions. Is the kind of people that you say, how are you feeling? And they're going to tell you, I'm doing great. Okay. And they're going to start talking about work and how we, what happened, if they, if they have a flat tire. And you keep saying, but how are you feeling about that? Well, my boss is kind of mean to me. And how <laughs> you feel? Oh, I'm doing great. And you're going to keep pushing and feelings are not going to happen. Uh-huh. But if I know that the way you express your feeling is doing in telling me, so it's easy for me to understand it's not that you don't want to share with me, that you're not want to be my partner in crime is the way you process. Thank you. Yeah. Now, yeah. I was just going to another, say, I was, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, I hate sorry. to interrupt you. I was just going to say, Susan, so what I'm hearing from you is basically that, you know, being able to do this and what you're describing helps Say, for instance, if I'm looking for a potential mate, helps me understand that person better so that we can maybe better communicate with each other and have a great relationship. Um, but it also kind of helps you to just be able to know, you know, what kind of a person a person is so that you know, you know, how to have a conversation with them and, you know, how to banter back and forth so that each of you gets out of the uh, relationship or the conversation what we need to. Is that basically what I'm hearing? Yeah, um, I'm, what the things we really have is a is a two way street. Right. It's knowing yourself first. So when somebody says, "Oh, I want you to read my partner," uh, first of all, if the person is in front of me, I ask the other person if wanting to be read. Now, if I have a client who says, "This is my partner," and says, "I cannot read your partner," uh, isolated from who you are, because I'm going to give you information. I'm not, I, I'm doing the diagnostic. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to fix the situation. I'm only going to give you the tools. I always say, I give you a toolbox with all the tools. Now, how you use it, when you use this, is your own decision and will. Okay. So if you want me to tell, tell you about your bar, partner, but you're not aware of your own thing, mm-hmm. you're going to use that to justify, to criticize your partner. Mm. And said to, okay. I have big upper lip, he has a small upper lip. So I need to tell my partner, you know what? Feelings for me are important. I know for you it's difficult. Why don't we meet on the middle that you make the, the intent to ask me about how I feel? And even if I talk about things that for you doesn't seem important, if I'm saying it, it's because they're important to me. Yeah. And you feel free to tell me when you're overwhelmed with my stories and I can back it up. Right. Can you imagine how many times and money you save in therapy? Oh my gosh, that would be great. That would be great. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I was getting from you is that we can really learn how to better communicate with each other. And, you know, we kind of dived into this, Susan. I didn't get a chance to hear. Uh, I, I want the listeners to understand your background and what kind of led you to being able to do this miraculous work. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I didn't understand the last word you said. The work that oh, you what? do, yeah. What 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 led you to being able to do this work, this field uh, of work? Well, yeah. Well, uh, I failed to do everything that I dreamed since I was a kid, so I needed to look for another way. I I I'm a huge advocate as dyslexia is not um, a disability. For me, it has been a gift, and I receive a lot of messages about parents who have kids who are dyslexic saying thank you for saying that because my kids always been treated like is disabled yeah so when you have dyslexia you have uh you have a learned pattern that's different and you're really bad expressing your words when you're writing so i'm yes. a horrible writer so i get things done and that i don't have things done perfectly because my brain works that way but the same part of my brain who doesn't allow me to be a good writer allow me to see things that other people don't see. And in order to learn to overcome my dyslexia, I needed to do everything seven to ten times. Wow. So I acquire an exercise memory that maybe other people doesn't have. So when I was studying psychology, one of my teachers told me that I don't think you're going to make it in academia. I wanted to have my PhD, be a profiler, behavioral analysis. I think you're not going to do it. 
So he points me in another, in another path. And that's where I met the first person when I was in my 20s. And that person led me to another, to another, to another, mm-hmm. to a point that I, I, I actually, I learned this from somebody who did an interview a year and a half ago. Not because I'm saying this. I'm the only person on the world who does all the channels, meaning some people do my expressions <clears throat> or body language, mm-hmm. although do statement analysis, forensic analysis, or face reading, or personality type, and now I'm doing two more channels than I haven't finished yet. I'm going to finish it for the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Give me a comprehensive, better understanding than what is going on outside. And I have the luxury to have been worked and trained with people who admire. Mm-hmm. I have talked uh, mentees, me- mentors for like two or three years until they took me. Like I insist and I insist and I insist until they finally took me and trained me. <laughs> okay. And I still, I'm their mentees and we practice and we talk and we exchange information. I never stop learning. So, uh, for example, I study hostage negotiators, negotiator level one, two, three, and international hostage negotiation because I want to understand the process because I wanted to train hostage negotiators mm-hmm. how to read faces to better communicate with the persons inside or about to jump from a bridge. Right. You have two different situations. The same way to uh, know when the words need to be paying really well attention. Because people don't pay attention to the words. But today, when you receive an email or a text message, or you're talking to someone on the phone, you can determine deception. I never use the term light deception mm-hmm. because it's not determining somebody's mind. You can find hot spots that you need to come back and review. Nobody's 100% accurate. I am not, and I haven't met anyone who is. Right. So I it's really important to be careful. It's like most people say, oh, if you learn how to read microexpression, you can determine if somebody's lying. Like, nope. A microexpression is a hot spot telling you something has happened. It's a feeling that person tries to withhold, but it's not telling you all the truth. All right. I spend more time in my classes breaking meat than training new traits <laughs> because as so many people talking about things they don't know, but right. basically my path started by failing and being extremely curious and never gave up. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you never gave up because look at you now. I mean, I, I literally have listened to lots of podcasts of you and um, I was just amazed at the way that you are able to nail people uh, when you after seeing their picture. So you asked me to send you a picture of me, and I did. And we're not going to talk about that right now, but uh, maybe later in the show you'll get a chance to read me. But you want to see the person's the front of their face. You want to see both sides because you're looking at the facial features that we were talking about earlier, and we're going to talk about a little bit more. And you're looking at the ears. You're looking at the size of the ears. You're looking at high or low. So all of that. So um, I'm sure we're going to get into this more, um, but I just wanted to let listeners hear how you got into this line of work and the type of certification you have or the training that you've had and all of that. So I wanted to do that. So, so we've talked about the eyebrows. What about the forehead and or the chin? What, what do they tell? Uh, for example, when somebody has a forehead who is round and, and we measure the forehead from your eyebrows where your hairline starts, even if a person is bald, you can determine where the forehead starts because you have two bumps that you can measure. So if you have a person who have a round forehead, that person is on the creativity side. Okay. So it's going to be creative. It's going to go to the museums. It's always going to be looking for something new and fun to do. It's going to be the person who's going to be looking for a... Uh, uh, cooking classes and maybe pottery classes and maybe gardening classes. I'm going to go to a museum and spend hours watching uh, paintings um, and it's going to be created and out of the box to um, uh, to to fulfill needs. I always use the IKEA set. A person with a round eyebrow, uh, um, forehead, I'm sorry, round forehead 
is gonna disassemble all the box, is gonna put all the screw and try to put the, the, the furniture together. Mm -hmm. Now, when we have a flat forehead, okay. that is an engineer, that person okay. is gonna resolve problems and steps. So it's gonna, it's gonna make a step one to 10 to fix or resolve everything. Okay. If you take that person from a step one to a step three, it's gonna freak out. That's me. I'm a flat forehead. <laughs> so it, it, everybody laughs because when a furniture arrives to the office or we need to assemble something in a tray show and it's, wait, where is the instructions? <laughs> so I get the instructions. I make sure I have all the tools. I put all the screw, measure what size they are. I assemble it. And sometimes I do it so strong that we cannot break it to bring <laughs> it back home. Wow. So that kind of person is going to be more structured and they want to do things in a certain way and it's going to be more difficult to go out of the comfort zone because we're the kind of person is if it's not broken don't fix it uh -huh. i still need my blackberry like it was perfect for me right so why did my blackberry away yes and teen are the eyebrows of the so we talk about that eyebrows right. are the way that we in process information. Right. The chin is the way that we process information when we talk to others. Okay. So around chin is going to be a person that doesn't matter how in take information, when you talk to others, it's going to be in a way they're going to be putting the people first. They're really good to building teams to be negotiators, to be mediators. It's that kind of for people that you're going to find that in a lot of therapists, big ears and low eyebrows and round team because they know how to talk softly. You see that people that they talk to you and you just want to punch it in the face before you <laughs> get to the door and you live in the same story instead to get mad. Well, that's the kind of people who can talk to you to the point that you can do whatever they want because they know the way how to talk to you uh -huh. because they see you. Uh -huh. Now, the people who have a straight chin is going to be like a laser focus. You said a straight you chin? A straight chin? A straight chin. Yeah, okay. you're going to prefer to grab your fingers with, uh, with, with the door before to go to hear of that person giving you feedback. Because it's going to be facts and data. It's not going to be considering like, okay, I have 45 minutes to give you a feedback. Why are you going to lose time? You're going to say, well, your performance is great, but, and after that, you know, the, the hell coming. Because it's a difference between and and but. If I said, Tina, I love your show and I listen all the time. And I says, Tina, I love your show, but mm -hmm. I listen sometimes. That makes the difference between positive and negative. Mm -hmm. So straight, straight chain is going to be the people who says, well, you know what? These are the problems that we have in your performance. And like, did I do something right? Yeah, but that doesn't count. It's all the things that you need to fix. Again, they're not bad people. Mm -hmm. I have friends who have straight chains. And when I need to resolve a problem, and I gone around my head of running myself like chicken without head. I'm going to that friend and says, okay, this is the problem. I give it a chunk of pieces, bullet points, and I'm stuck in this point. What should, what should I do based on what you know about me? And says, well, that's what you're doing wrong. That's what you need to do. Move forward. I'm like, great. I my assistant is that way. We were editing a video today uh -huh. and says, Dave, what do you think about this video? I love it, but you know the sound is horrible, no? I'm like, I love you, dude. Never leave me. I Because he's not sugarcoating me. Yes, yes. He saved me so much time because, but I know maybe he's going to have problems with other people because the way he communicates. Right. But he's a sweetheart. He's like a marshmallow. Yeah. But I know that when he communicates, do it in, the, in that way. He's going to so like, like what I'm saying. Yeah. It has to do with complimentary. Yeah. So the last one is pointy eye, pointy chin. Right. And that people is more selfish and more in control. Actually, uh, in one of my classes and the online classes, we have all a section hand on how Disney has portrayed and how video games portray certain characters mm -hmm. and how they develop their faces. Right. Believe it or not, 
video games and uh, movies and animation use people like me because your brain is going to read those those faces and features because believe it or not everybody is a face reader what we do people like us is uncover that pandora box and show you how to take that information and give it a context to better understand it okay so like the characters like a say for instance a witch or a mean person like they always seem to make that that witch have a pointy chin or a, you know if it's a ghost or you know scream you know they're going to have, have a they're going to have a small iris mm -hmm. they're going to have pointy chin they're going to have pointy turn down noise a uh, nose and they're going to have a pointy chin pointy eyebrows pointy nose and down turn down and they have a small irises because people with small irises is more prone to uh, flip. They have less resistance. But if you see, for example, I don't know, Shrek or all those uh, right, right. characters, they have big pupils because uh, they, ha they have big irises and pupils because they're like, oh my God, it's so sweet. Yes, yes, the sweet characters, yes. Now, what about the dimples? Um, can you tell anything about dimples? I know you've said something about, you know, the, if there's a dimple in the chin or, you know, what does that mean? So what do you think about dimples? Well, doesn't matter what kind of chin you have. It happens to with the size too. For example, if you met a man with square big chin and have a dimple, it's going to be really playful. Okay. So probably, is, and if this person has a small ears and a big chin and a dimple, it's going to be the kind of man who need to be stimulated by visual. So pay attention to your makeup. It's going to be reviewing. It's going to, it's going to be paying more attention to your manicure than yourself. Mm. And if, for example, you want to set a, a nice date, you need to say, you know, honey, you can remember you told me you love red. Well, guess what I have under my black dress? That's it. <laughs> that guy is going to be kissing the floor. you walking all night until you see, can see the red underwear. Why? Because they're playful that you play with the imagination. Oh. Now, if the dimples are on the cheek, like two fingers away from the mouth, they're two, two, two small ones. Those are uh, funny people. It's people who cope with jokes so if you put that people on situations that they don't know how to manage or they get nervous they're going to play with with humor in order to get away because yes, they don't know what to say yes. or they're going to be intimidated imagine a person with small upper lip and you start like putting that person against the wall and the stair and like you need to tell me like did I tell you that you're the most beautiful person in the world and you make me laugh? They want to go that way to get away with whatever you said. Mm -hmm. So those are the dimples. And we have, after that, we have uh, wrinkles. Okay. Then to me are not wrinkles. To me are uh, the best map to get to what is the deepness on you. Because the wrinkles show pain. The wrinkles show uh, when you are empath with other person. For example, I I have a, a dark phobia that everybody knows that I'm addicted to serial killers. Mm. I study serial killers and not only the stories, I study the pictures for okay. fun. Okay. Actually I have I have consulted with some people who does this professionally and ask for pictures. They don't have any wrinkles related to empathy. They don't have any wrinkle related to emotion, uh, emotional pain, or any wrinkle to show regret about anything they can have done. Mm. And they usually are pretty disconnected with reality, and, and there are some features inside the inner cut of the, the, the ear that you can read. And if you see too much white stare on the eye, it's people who disconnecting from reality. So... It's so much that you can read from wrinkles, from dimples, and from the shape and size of the face. All right. Okay. So now I want to move to the ears, Susan. 
We've talked about the yeah. eyebrows. We've talked about the chin, the dimples, the uh, forehead. What about ears? Big ears, small ears, high, low? Tell us about that. Okay, let me see. If I can read your ears and your eyes, I don't need to see anything else in your face. That's the reason all my media appearances are with dark glasses. Yes, because I Because I, I, I always say, I choose my customer before I choose my, 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 my business. If I need to explain you why it, my picture is a teaser, and I have shows, then I say, this is my media appearance, and it's a way to play with you and with your audience. If you want to change the picture, it's not going to work because, you know what, this is, this is for a particular curious people. It's not for everybody to digest. Mm -hmm. So in your ears, I can read. Let me see. Earlobe, detached and attached. Size, inner cuff, outer cuff, um, size of the ear. If the ear is completely attached, detached, only the upper part or the lower part is detached. Mm -hmm. So I can read all those things. And on the Chinese uh, phase reading, I do know the, West, the Western, I know they have three or more features they can be read. But I would say that there are two features that it can help you to understand a person based on your ears and they can be easily identified. If the ear is a small in proportion to the face, we always talk about proportion. My ears are small for my face, but if you put my ears, I don't know, in another person, right. the, the proportion can be really different. So you need to me measure the ear from when they start until the end. And if that ear sits three times between the line of the head, the, the, the line of the hair, and the line of the chin, it fits two, three times until you have some space on the face that is a small ear. Now, if the ear fits three times, just perfect, almost perfect three times, that is a person who is average, meaning they can navigate both situations. Or if the ears are like really big, like Prince Charles mm -hmm. in England, those are big ears. Okay. So that is a huge difference. So a person with big ears, like we said in the, in the beginning, is going to listen deeply to what you have to say. They're not going to interrupt. They want to hear absolutely all the information, analyze the intake information really carefully, uh, has to listen to people, prefer consistency, then a speed. It's good at listening. So most Women who have partners who have big ears, they complain that the, the, the person who have in front of them, they don't participate on the, on the conversation. Actually, <laughs> they're listening. They like consistency. If you want to approach a person, try to have an instructor to talk, a logical sequence with fully understanding the message. Mm -hmm. If it's not, big ears are not going to happen. Okay. Now, small ears are people who learn better when they can see. The ears are located in your eyes. The tone and the context of your voice is going to be really important. Important. Probably we're going to make a list to take note about things uh, so they can remember and set concept. If someone is dragging things without showing you something, you're going to stop listening because we people with small ears, in my case, where we 100% visual, okay. learn better by example. Uh, they give real meaning to the world. They trust themselves, their own experience. It's okay. people who uh, need to see things to learn how they need to be done. And they use, uh, they use them as the way they live. You need to have all the image and the words so this person can imagine the approach. If you're going to have your partner taken to a vacation and that person has small ears, you need to show pictures of the, <clears throat> the beach, the resort. Okay. Um, you're going to have a new car. You need to show the car about this person. Instead, a person with big ears, you need to talk about uh, how good the car it is, mm -hmm. uh, what are the benefits, is going to want to know the consistency on the company, and probably they're not going to go with new companies and new ideas because they like the consistency on things. Okay. All right. 
Well, that's really interesting. That is really something. So, because um, I'm thinking about, I don't know, would Obama's ears be considered to be large ears? Barack you Obama? know what? I don't recall. I don't this remember. Time. I, I just I know. think he have a small ear. Small ears. They I just, don't recall by memory. Yeah, they just kind of stick out a little bit. But I just didn't know if they that would be considered small or big. But anyway, all right. Uh, I don't recall if the church we told what happened with me when people that were that like somebody's colleague. I read so many faces a day to get to a point that <laughs> they get the switch. I do recall that he has ears stick out, meaning yes. that he thinks outside the box. Yes. Uh, he's going to be always looking for a way to do things in a different way. And they're going to be good with financial decisions. And they're going to keep doing and doing until they find a better way to do it. And okay. they're going to jump and do it. They're not afraid to take risks. Uh -huh. So if you are with a person who sticks uh, ears to stick out, yes. and you are conservative, you're going to go crazy and like, why are you doing <laughs> this? We agree the bathroom is going to be to the left. Like, well, I can see it and I'll look at the option. It's going to go to the left, to the right. Like, yeah, but we agree. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yes, yes. Okay. So those are the kind of things that people who have ears stick to the head, they're more diplomat. Actually, i I had look on the on the NATO and the UN and the Congress and most of the people who are the conciliaries mm -hmm. they have ears stick to the to the head because they're the diplomats they're the the one who's gonna look for the way to everybody get together. Ah, okay, all right. Well, now let's move to body language. So I know that um, you said your face can lie, but your feet really show where you're going. Is that what you say? Is that what you like to say? Yeah. Uh, there are three things that I look when I check on a couple uh, when they're on the bar. Mm -hmm. First, if one of them puts something between them, like the salt and pepper or the glass, or you see when people start aligning things between two when they sit in front of each other, mm -hmm. uh, the person who is aligning those things is putting a, a, a barrier. You're going to know if at the end, if the date went, went well, because the glasses and the plates and everything on the table start getting start getting together. It's like a way to like, okay, I'm going to put my glass near to you because I like you and then that's what physically I want to do. Mm. So somebody can be facing you, but from the hip, legs and feet are facing away from you. That person is not engaged with you. Wow. I, in one of my meetup last class, and I, I, I just happened to record that meetup to, because I record myself to, to see what I can improve always. One of, we were talking about body language. And when I said, well, this is time for Q and I, one of the gentlemen turned, or turned to me and crossed the arm. So other guy says, oh my God, you are not engaged. And says, shit, don't say anything. Look at him. He has 90 degrees face. He, he, he has his head and neck 90 degrees spin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shoulders are back. Mm -hmm. The hips are, are facing me. The knees and legs are facing me. And the feet are facing me. He's crossing the arms because he's visual and he needs to evaluate. And before he make a question, because he has a big forehead, he want to make sure that it's the right question and doesn't sound so stupid. Tell me if what I'm saying is right. And the guy says, I couldn't have described it better. <laughs> so it's a misconception about our body, how we use it. Right. Crossing arms without a context doesn't mean that the person is engaged. Most people tend to cross arms when they need to make decisions. And when they uncross the arms, is when they're ready to make the decision. Yes. I use a lot that a lot when I teach people in sales, right. because the first thing they tell is like, "Oh, the client is close." Like, no, if you ask for a second date and the person is facing you, suddenly cross the arms or cross one arm and the other arm is going to the chin. It's not they doesn't want to have a date. They're thinking. They're thinking when there is going to be the next date. Yeah. They have free to see you. But always check the feet. 
if at least one of the seats is facing you, that person is engaged with you. Okay. And you always, always need to have the first date on the bar. You need to be next to the person. You need to allow touching, smelling, feeling. In a proper way, obviously, if somebody touched your roof, so in a proper place, and when you say hello, definitely that is a red flag. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, has nothing to do with sex. Red flags are red flags. Do not justify. When I talk to people who have problems and dates, it's like, did you feel something was wrong? Yes. And why you didn't live? Well, that's what the problem is. It's, well, you justify. Mm -hmm. If you feel something in your, in your stomach that is not butterfly and it's a red flag, go away from that day. Go okay. always to a place that you know. Never allow the person to pick you up or drop you on the first date. Okay. Yes. Make sure that you Uber or taxi or whatever where you go. Mm -hmm. uh, another way, as I always say, when you're not driving, the person cannot follow you. Mm -hmm. Because I remember Jeffrey Dahmer and all the serial killers, do you know what they have in common? Mm. They were extremely charming. Oh. All of them make women walk to them without resistance and most of them have women walk to them without resistance wow so charming it can be uh like drinking drinking water from the tip of the knife you can cut your tongue or you can have the best experience so going a slow take your time reading the red flag it's nothing wrong if the right person for you and it's rushing things and doesn't sound good for you then run, huh? Take a look. We check, okay, we check before to buy a washing machine. We check before we buy shoes. We check before we buy pants. Why are we not going to check before we get somebody in a relationship with? Right. Of course. Yeah. So is it possible, uh, Susan, for somebody to say one thing with their mouth, but their body language say something else? And so how do you, how do you read that then? That's kind of interesting. Sometimes, so actually, that happens when people don't pay attention to words. Um, if you're on a date and somebody's facing you and you ask, it's common when you are over 40 and you go in a, in a second relationship, this question come a lot. Have you ever cheated on your wife? Oh, I'm against that. Your brain <laughs> and your conformity, because you want to make that person fit on your chart, you read no. Actually, he cheated on his wife. Mm -hmm. It's not replacement for yes or no. If I say to you, have you ever did drugs? I would never do that. I would. It's in the future. You don't know if it was snoring cocaine on the, on the, on the, on the, on the right. parking lot. Mm -hmm. So when words are not definitive, if I says, do you want to have another date? Let me call you back. If you live in the third date, the probability is that date is that is going to be a second date or short. It's different. It's, yes, I want to have a second date. Just let me go back to you with time. I don't know when I'm traveling. Mm -hmm. That is different. It was a yes or no in the beginning. So if I says, well, I decided that I'm going to start dating. Decision is a thought. It's not, it's not an act. I want to start dating is not the same I decide to start dating. Um, when you ask somebody how long you had been divorced, oh, for a long time. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, I can tell you how many years, days, months, days, and hours has been divorced mm -hmm. because it was the best moment of my life. So you need to be really careful with the word people use and Another thing invoking religion, religion is like, um, have you ever have, have you ever, again, cheating your wife? I'm a Christian. It's again my religion. Why you <laughs> need to use any other else than yes or no? Uh -huh. So I'm not saying to be Colombo, but it's a certain common sense, and I include myself, then when we meet someone, we want that person to be everything that we're looking for. 
and nobody deceives you. Why? Because deceiving is the expectation we put in others. That's the reason I always jump really fast and met someone. Because it doesn't matter how much I know about this craft, uh, we everybody want to build that perfect relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's good to let the other person unbuild themselves. Nobody's perfect because I have news for you. You're not either. Right. You're not going to change. I'm not going to change either. So if we can be complementary and the things that are important to make the relationship grow, complement, great. And if you feel it's not, some people say given a second chance because first dates are horrible, yeah. are like job interviews, do it. But if you're between one and 100, you're 95% this is not going to happen, just move on. Right. Best thing. The, the ocean is full of fishes. So go ahead and go find another one, huh? <laughs> All right. So now I, I guess I'm wanting to, um, I know that you've talked about lying and you kind of touched on it just a moment ago when you, people kind of evade a question. And you, I know you're of the belief that a lot of times we're not asking the right questions. And I think that was kind of what you were touching on just a moment ago uh, is the reason why we may not get the right answer that we're that we should get is because we're not asking the right questions. Is that correct? Yeah, I did. I don't remember. It was an article. It was a video. And it said, people don't lie to you. Mm -hmm. You don't make the right question. What are the reasons? We are not ready to face with reality. Uh, We are not emotionally prepared to listen what the the other person needs to say. Um, We are too self-aware of everything, so you don't have time for that. Uh, I don't know. I, if I put a couple of pounds, I'm not going to ask my friends, do you think I'm kind of fatty? Because they're going to tell me the truth, and right. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Why? Because I've been in my pajamas for a week eating Cheerios because I've been doing research, so I don't I have even time to eat healthy, go to the gym, or take my PJs off. So when I try to put a pair of jeans, I'm like, oh my God, how right. many pounds are good? Right. So there are many reasons why. And again, I think in dating and relationships, sometimes I hear people say, well, I've been married with this person for 15 years, so I'm going to put up with cheating. And like, that is a justification not to make the right question. <laughs> or when friends come to me and say, do you think this person is lying? If you're asking me, it's only because you're looking for confirmation. You already know. Right. It's not to me you need to make the question with the other person. Yeah. So if you're going to your boss and says, are you going to have a raise? Let me think about it. He's not telling you. Right. Actually, until six months after you don't get to um, the job, we don't talk about uh, raises. Actually, it means there can be never. Yeah. When you hit six months, it's not happened. Right. So you met somebody new and says, um, do you like a long-term relationship or you looking for a hookup? Actually, I'm exploring options. I like you. I would like to see how this go and uh, explore a long relationship with you. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I can, I can give you a 45-minute explanation of all the things that are wrong in that answer. Mm-hmm. What about a, a question? I was going to ask you, what about a question like this? So if, uh, you know, we've gone out for maybe three dates, and so I'm really trying to figure out if, you know, we are going to be, let's just say, hypothetically, if, if we're going to be exclusive, or are you going to date other people? So I asked the person, so um, are you are you going to continue to date other people? Or that person says, are you going to continue to date other people? Uh, what do you think about that? They don't answer your question, but then they ask you what you've asked them, or they answer because with a question. What do you think about that? I hate answer with questions because you don't want to expose your opinion until you don't see what the other person says, so you can accommodate your answer to the other person. Mm-hmm. You're trying to accommodate. Yeah, yeah, that's so. What I if say. I said, yeah. What do you want to eat? What do you want to eat? Like, don't try to please me. You can have your pizza. I can have my pasta. What is the problem? Don't ask me what I'm going to eat. Yes. It's yes. the same. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 
Okay. Sometimes life is simple. They want to make make them. The problem is when we put emotion on observation, we have a bias. And believe me, I know people who've been doing this for years and it has worked for every agency with three letters, and they have been partners to embezzle on them. Kids doing drugs and they don't knew it. Partners cheating on them. Because more you know the person you are around to, more biased to become. Why? Because you never expect the people that you love and you care. Mm -hmm. It's betraying you. And it's happened to me. I have friends who betrayed me. And when they ask me what happened, I'm like, I don't look for enemies on my, on my surrounded. I look for that outside. So I lower my shield and if this person gets too close, my mistake but you know what the other person loves them more than i lose because i'm going to be keep being who i am right okay well susan um as promised now i, I said that you were going to tell a little bit about the picture that i showed you we have just a few more minutes here uh, before we wrap up and i went ahead i, I sent you in order for you to do this you asked that i send a photo of me from the front and then you wanted two side views, one of my right ear, one of my left ear. You know, so that's what I gave you. Um, so share with us how you would, if you had a client to give you a picture like I've done, how you'd go about reading it and what would happen. Yeah, first of all, I asked you to send me the picture when we start the interview because so I don't overthink it. That's right. So I sent it like 10 minutes before we are, were able to get together. Yep, just sent it to you. Yeah. One of the things you are, you balance your thinking, your feeling, and your doing. So when somebody needs to be thinking, you think with them. When somebody needs to feel, you feel with them. When you, somebody needs to do, you do with them. The conflict on that is when one of them needs to be overpower the other because the situation is needed to be too emotional, that is when you can have I would say a conflict and like, okay, what is, what is the, what is the one who needs to come first? Mm -hmm. Another thing, people sometimes don't, don't get to you because there's nothing wrong with you. You have that magic trick that we call chameleon eyebrows okay. that are kind of blurry. You cannot see it perfectly. So you can be hiding in a corner in a room and nobody see you. Until Tina decides, I'm going to be the center of the show, and everybody suddenly is around, and nobody pay attention that you was in that room for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know how to walk a room or not walk it when it's not necessary. Yes. That makes you really good in business and negotiations mm -hmm. because you know when you step on on a step down. Mm -hmm. You, my darling, are the one who doesn't talk about feelings. You talk about doing you're really good talking with people. You're really kind. You have round chin, or you have one of the most round chins than I ever saw in a long wow. time. Wow. Oh, gosh. What does that mean uh, again? Round chins? Round chin is you people oriented, but you have pointy eyebrows. So you have what I see in a lot of women who does what you do. You're a fixer. You try to fix everything. When somebody came with a problem or a situation, you jump in a fixing mode. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people say, I didn't want you to fix me. I just <laughs> wanted to cry. And you're like, but you don't see the problem. I don't care about the problem. I care that I'm hurt. Mm -hmm. So you're kind, but your kindness sometimes is taken like, okay, because you're a doer. So like, okay, I understand your feeling. I think in that's what we need to be doing. Right. I don't see too good your uh, your your um right ear, but you definitely think outside the box. Mm -hmm. The top of your ears are completely detached from the <coughs> sorry from the head. Mm -hmm. So you are the kind of person who always gonna look for doing something uh, in a different way. Uh, you're gonna be really good with um uh you make your own rules. Mm -hmm. um, you're independent uh, things for a period of time are good but if you see the opportunity to change jump in something new you're going to do it you're not afraid to change uh, you're not afraid to give it a, a shot you're really careful when you need to invest 
because you study absolutely everything. And you're the kind of person who um, you don't share things friendly. Like you take your time and when they make sense, you share it with others. Mm -hmm. You have really small... Okay, let me see this. Yeah, you are extremely pragmatical. Mm -hmm. You are the one who make a PowerPoint first and align it after because for you it's more important the information who is on the presentation than the presentation per se. Uh, for you is the context, is the information, you have pointy eyebrows, that means the knowledge mm -hmm. and being right based on knowledge is for you important. My darling, you, the only problem you have is you picking up everybody's problem and you put it on your shoulders. Mm. You're always taking care about everyone. My question is, who's taking care of you? Yeah, yeah. You know, for a long time, that's uh, that's truly been the case. But lately, uh, I do have someone who's taking care of me, so that's good. Well, Susan, it has been very, very good having you on the show. So if someone is interested in um, getting you to maybe look at a photo and hack somebody or just help them with some of the things that we've talked about, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, you can uh, Google me, Susan Ivitt. Uh, you can friend me on LinkedIn, or you can go to one of our websites, which is humanbehavioralab.com. Uh, in the middle of April, we launching a second company and website with humanbehaviorhackerschool.com wow. because a lot of people have been asking to learn this craft, and I cannot divide myself in any more pieces. So <laughs> yeah. I took technology, I put it in my favor, and we are finishing recording. I ne when I accept this challenge, I wasn't expecting to be so complicated. But the good news is. We have another 20 coaches. They're going to be teaching things about behavior too. So it's going to be a, a community of coaches. Uh, but me personally, are going to be teaching face reading, linguistic, and how to determine what somebody's lying by, by, by words to text, yes. uh, body language, microexpression, and the differences on personality types to understand why people is not trying to drive you crazy. It's just they're different than you are. Yeah. And there's so much more that we could talk about. I tell you, it's just the time has gone so gone by so fast. But um, I, just like the other podcasters that I've heard, will definitely uh, invite you to come back because I'd like us to get into the micro expressions and, you know, uh, looking at text and statements and different things like that, statement analysis and all of that. Um, it's just so very interesting. So, again, Susan, uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a, a great experience. Thank you so much. And we can challenge the audience and start sending pictures. We don't need to show the picture. We but we can assign a number to each picture. Says, yeah. Well, your partner has this and this picture and do it live. If people want to do it, I would love to do those kind of things. All right. Well, good. Thank you so much. Well, I hope that you all have learned a lot just as much as I have. And thank you for listening to this episode of the Lover's Lounge podcast, where we talk to experts and other guests on topics related to love, relationships, and sex. I am your host, Tina Love, and until next time, peace. And of course, don't forget, love.